Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap of Bears podcast by a Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry, and today I'm doing a player spotlight on Bilal Nichols. So before we get started real quick, just want to mention again, I've started my Patreon uh, campaign. If you want to go to the description section, go to patreon.com, check out the page, see uh, kind of what I'm talking about. And if you like the content, maybe consider supporting. Uh, also... I have to say this again. I guess people forgot. We're all Bears fans. We want the Bears to win. We're trying to go towards the same thing. So I know we got the goof fans. Everybody family has the goofy ones that you just got to deal with. But for the most part, I would hope the people on this channel are open-minded and, you know, respectful to us being Bears fans. So anyway, with that being said, uh, I'm running it back with the player spotlights. People said they wanted to do it again. And so we will, starting off with Bilal Nichols, was our rookie D lineman out of Delaware, fifth round pick, and going into his sophomore year. So uh, kind of talking about what has he done for us lately, that's what I used to start with. And I get the stats out of the way quick, not a big stats guy. So he had three sacks, um, he had almost 30 tackles, 28 combined, and then he had two forced fumbles. So... As far as the rookie class of D lineman, it wasn't a huge year. The top total was six. So he was tied for seventh with a couple other players, including Vita Vea, who was a top first round pick as well. Uh, not a pass rusher, but still. And I wouldn't say Bilal's a pass rusher. So pretty solid numbers for a guy that we know was in the rotation. Uh, Keem Hicks and Eddie Goldman are big time players in the interior D line. Of course, you added Khalil Mack. So a lot of rotation going on. So I wouldn't say a guy that saw, uh, you know, a crazy amount of snaps. But for his rotation, was able to do some numbers. Now, a Bilal Nichols, what, what, what did we get? I think we got huge benefit. I really like the pick to begin with. Uh, as I kind of mentioned, he made a real impression at the uh, Senior Bowl. And so... Seeing him going get some of the top prospects and really just his leverage. I mean, he's a big dude, but able to use his leverage and stay underneath uh, blocks and get in underneath people's pads. That was such a huge thing. And then I think you saw that power on display as a rookie as well, where for a big guy, he's well built and he's got a good amount of explosion. I mean, he's not an edge rusher before interior guys got good explosion. And he's got pretty long arms, but he uses the leverage well. He can uh, get underneath blocks, and he's pretty strong and strong enough to defeat those blocks, to hold his gap, all those different things. So I think we got a little bit of everything as far as the flavor. We saw a little bit of the pass rush ability, not to the fact that he's going to, again, win on the edge, but to the fact that if he gets off a block, he can explode to the quarterback because up the middle is the quickest way to the quarterback. And so if you aren't using good technique, if you aren't using proper leverage, he does have a good enough move where he can discard a, a block and start uh, his way to the quarterback. And if he gets his hands on you, he's going to finish. That's one of the things as far as playing a run, as far as sacking a quarterback, He's a strong dude, and you can tell by the way he kind of ragdolls some of these uh, players when he tackles them. So pass rush, we saw it. As a run defender, again, we saw it not just getting off blocks, but similar to Eddie Goldman, the ability to sustain his gap. A guy that's not going to be five yards down the field on majority of the plays. He's going to be able to hold that gap. Uh, play that basketball position, you know, keep his arm free, all those good things, and then gets a double team, he's not going to be an easy guy to move. So uh, for a fifth-round pick, I think we get excellent value uh, for what he was able to bring uh, to a rotation that has two, you know, prominent players already. Now, as far as what we're going to be looking for next year, this is the tough thing about – Every offseason discussion we're going to have about the whole team, really, because most of our players are coming back on both sides of the ball, especially defense. So you're talking about largely a same similar group where, again, Akeem Hicks and Eddie Goldman 
are big time players. So do I expect Bilal to get into the rotation? Yes, especially when we're doing third down packages or different things like that. But overall, I don't know that his usage rate is going to jump up crazy barring injury. So if hopefully we have Hicks and we have Goldman healthy, I don't see Nichols like, you know, doubling his plays or anything like that. I think he'll get more. And we saw he started to get a little more reps as we went towards uh, the end of the season. But, you know, if we blow on the team out, he's definitely going to come in. Uh, definitely going to do some spot duty, but he might get a package. I think that's what we'll really see is that he'll probably get a package as well. And that's kind of what we saw towards the end of the season anyway. And so, uh, I don't, again, I'm not big into stats, so I I don't know that his numbers are going to be dramatically different. Uh, but of course with more pass rush opportunities, I would assume he would definitely put up three or more sacks at least. And not only to mention the opportunities, but I have a feeling, and I don't know this, we'll see, but I have a feeling that Pagano is going to be a lot more movement heavy on the D-line than we were previously, where we were a lot more straight up uh, on regular downs. And so... Um, that's my kind of feeling, especially as we do some more exotic blitzes. And so whenever you get twists and stunts and games and blitzes, guys can get wide open, get an easy sack. And so I think there'll be more opportunities for him to pick up something like that. Uh, but overall, I just think the best thing he gives us, like I said, is a rest for those two interior because he can line up at the nose like Eddie and fight against double teams. He has that ability uh, to be sturdy and to anchor. But he also can line up at that three, not exactly three because we're eye front, but he can line up in that uh, four, four eye, three sometimes if you reduce him down. And he he can line up and play uh, that type of role that Akeem Hicks does because, again, Akeem's not Aaron Donald. He's not a straight up the field three uh, technique. And so Bilal doesn't need to be. It's definitely more of a physical position where he can maintain a block, but also has the ability to get off the block and get up the field when he knows it's a pass. And so, again, I'm excited. I'm excited for him. I think it's a crucial part because I don't think we fall off a ton if uh, Hicks or Bilal, or excuse me, if Hicks or Goldman has to take, you know, uh, some plays off, a series off, or a game off. Um, But it is nice to have him as a rotation to keep them fresh because, of course, that's what you want at the end of the day is people uh, staying fresh and not hurt. Uh, So I'm excited to see how he develops. I think he has a lot of raw talent, natural bend in his hips, natural strength to his play. Uh, and he, he has confidence now. He played against grown men and he know that he can do it. And so now I'm curious as to what he's going to add. Having that full off season with Akeem Hicks, with Eddie Goldman, with Khalil Mack in that group. Uh, can he add more pass rush? Uh, you know, can he add just more moves in general to disengage blocks? And, you know, will he continue to get stronger? Or sometimes you have guys that's just like, oh, man, I'm super strong. I'm going to just, you know, keep it status quo. Or will he even go further than what he is? So uh, as far as a label, as I labeled them last year, um, it's tough. I wouldn't say he's a young piece to build around because we got good depth at the D-line. And even though uh, some of those guys are a little older, we just we're not building around Bilal. Um, so I would say he's more of a backup, but more like a six man role, like, you know, a fringe starter type. Uh, but I wouldn't say he's a young piece to build around. And I wouldn't say backup negatively. I just think he's a rotational player, if that's a better word to say it. So I'm excited to see what he does. But go to the comment section. Let me know what you think about Bilal Nichols. Share it around, get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe. Thank you for listening. Check out the Patreon and remember, stay up and bear down.